We're going to revisit the 6-5 Creedmoor. This is a September edition of Shooting Times. There's an article in here by Joseph Von Benedict. It's a very, very good article. It talks about a new rifle built by Seiko to do with the 6-5 Creedmoor. I'm going to read a paragraph by Joseph. I'm guessing the S20 has a minimum dimension max type chamber because Federal's hybrid hunting match grade ammo with burger, burger bullets were snug. Two cartridges out of the box were, were tight enough that the bolt wouldn't close on them. Tight chambers are both good and bad. Without a tight chamber, you usually can achieve the sort of accuracy the S20 is capable of. On the flip side, you want the chamber, you want to chamber and check all ammunition at the range before hunting or competing with it. Well, despite the fact that he wrote an amazingly nice article, here's a guy writing about something, and he's following the chamber of the rifle. This is not a fault of a tight chamber. It's real, real obvious, folks. Real, real obvious, especially to a, a lifetime learned fellow on this subject, such as myself. There are simply two of those cartridges that the brass dimensionally was a little bit different. It's simple. The, those two rounds wouldn't chamber in the rifle. That's what the difference is. Trying all 20 rounds out of that box of ammunition in the rifle, all the others went in. Did the rifle chamber all of a sudden change its dimension when he got to these other two cases? Why, hell no, it didn't change. It's still the same. A hand loader, by definition, is an experienced reloader. He doesn't really need to go particularly anywhere for help. He understands, like I do, because I have reloaded over my lifetime over for cart over 250 different rifle and pistol cartridges. The average person is maybe only reloaded for three, four, five different cartridges, if even that. So my purpose here is to try to explain some things. I see that people are going to the reload manual. They might only have one, they might have several. I've got quite a number collected over a lifetime. Plus a tremendous amount of data that I have produced that a lot of it's recorded. The data has been recorded that actually worked well. There's things that never worked well. And you can pick up a reloading manual from all of the manufacturers, all the producers of these reloading manuals. And everybody, regardless of what cartridge it is, there are anywhere from, from several, there may be several dozen powders listed that can be loaded in various cartridges. And yes, the various powders can be loaded in that cartridge. But when you look at the loading manual, look at the velocities, look at the powder charges. To talk about triggers, we're going to talk specifically about adjusting a trigger. This is a Winchester Model 70 action. This is a Timney trigger. Many, many triggers are made somewhat like this Timney trigger. The back of the trigger here, there's a screw and a nut, and that adjusts your sear engagement of the trigger. Here in the front, this bottom screw, there's a, a screw and a nut. That adjusts the poundage. There's a screw up here on the front. That's the over-travel screw. One of the reasons that I'm going through this this morning is because I've I've encountered in my lifetime just about every wrongly adjusted trigger 
that it possibly could be. 